Praise the Lord. I welcome to this program. If you are here for the first time, we are on program number 190. Uh, so there are so many programs that have come before this one. But in every program, is complete by itself. But we are talking about knowledge of God in very, very different ways. And today, we are going to talk about unfaithfulness. In the last program, we, talk, we talked about faithfulness. Here, we are going to talk about unfaithfulness. The opposite of being faithful is unfaithfulness. But let us pray before we start. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for the viewers that are on TV today. I pray that you shall be with them, every individual, and you shall help us to understand your word and that your Holy Spirit shall cause your word to come forth with power and authority in our lives. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. And as we talk about knowledge of God, because that's the main thing we are dealing with, uh, we are making reference to Amos 3.3, where the word of God says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? That agreement thing is what we are pursuing. Can you walk with a friend and you are not in agreement? Especially if you have to go far, a long distance. Especially if it is a marriage. A marriage where you have not known each other, and you are not in a full agreement, it's likely to terminate along the way. And as we walk with our God, let's remember it's a marriage. And we want this marriage to go the whole leg in this, in this life, and in the life to come, the marriage is still on. So it's not a short distance. So we want to know him, we want to understand him, and that way, then we, ha we have wisdom. We are also basing our sharing uh, on Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9, which says, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The way the waters cover the sea, then the knowledge of the Lord shall also fill the earth. So with these two scriptures, we are digging into different aspects. Today we are talking about unfaithfulness. What God feels in cases of unfaithfulness, and what is it that God would consider to be unfaithfulness? We want to know God from that angle. What he is speaking. In First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 25, <clears throat> the word says, And they were unfaithful to the God of their fathers and played the harlot after the gods of the peoples of the land whom God had destroyed before them. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria. He carried the, the Reubenites and Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh into captivity. So the people, the children of Israel, were unfaithful. They did halot, uh, halot. They played halot with the gods of the peoples. The peoples that God vomited from their land because of their unfaithfulness, immorality, because of their idolatry. When their idolatry was full, God could not bear it. So these other nations were thrown out by God. So the children of Israel had known that. They had seen God do it. But the children of Israel themselves were carried to those other gods. They went to the gods of these people. And so this word is saying God was most unhappy and God stirred up the spirit of Pul, P-U-L, king of Assyria, that he carried the Reubenites and Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh into captivity because of their unfaithfulness. They were drawn to other gods so they played halot with those other gods. So when we are looking at unfaithfulness, always think about marriage. You see it clearly and very fast. So when there is unfaithfulness in a marriage, one spouse is drawn uh, to others. One, one spouse is drawn and is having affairs outside marriage. So it's exactly the same thing. 
the unfaithfulness in God is the same thing. When our hearts are drawn to other gods, and it is in every nation, it is everywhere, and it is coming too close to our doors, it's coming so close even on our TV, the other gods, and we can easily be drawn to those other gods. It doesn't matter the labels we put there, and it becomes a major, major problem in families, in individuals, in a nation like our nation, that unfaithfulness, idolatry before God is a big issue. And that's a subject we can dwell on because it's the main risk now we are facing because of our unfaithfulness to the God of Israel, to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in this particular case, this, this, uh, this, this uh, tribes of Israel were taken into captivity by this king of Assyria. And uh, this capti captivity thing is still the same thing that uh, the same idolatry, the same playing of playing a harlot uh, that went on until the children of Israel again went to, to Babylon. But uh, this is like a smaller project in terms of uh, captivity. So we want to trust the Lord as we look at the faithfulness to God, then unfaithfulness. We want to be sure that because we know God so well, we know what he can do when there is unfaithfulness. It's like marriage is broken. It's like uh, there is uh, divorce or separation. In this case, call it separation if you wish. There is separation. You cannot afford to be separated from God. And you see, God does not change. Our God does not change. You don't want to be separated from your God because that will make things become chaotic. People who suffer reje uh, rejection, uh, they suffer separation, they suffer divorce, their lives never remain the same. There is always something that is aching on the inside. There is always a uh, certain deficiency, certain, certain pain that other people may not be able to to, to experience, to, to know, to explain it. So when we are separated from our God, uh, things go wrong. Isaiah 59, verse 1. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. His ear is not dull that it cannot uh, save, uh, it, can, it cannot hear. But we are separated from him so that he doesn't hear by our iniquities, by our sins. In this case, unfaithfulness. In this case, idolatry. That's why we would pray and fast and do all sorts of things, and God is not moving at all, at all. And that is not good for us. We want to trust the Lord, but as we hear about unfaithfulness and how God behaves when there is unfaithfulness, we shall trust God that we shall be faithful ourselves, individually first. Because if it does not start there, it becomes a very big project. But if we make decisions as individuals that we are going, I am going to be faithful myself to God. I will never allow another God to come and interfere with my marriage with Christ. Let's talk about Christ, because when we say God, uh, many people have names for God. And sometimes we don't know which God we are talking about. Let's talk about our marriage with Christ, so that we, have, we define it much more in more details that uh, you cannot sneak in anything foreign. Our marriage with Christ. We know Christ is the Son of God, and he's the God of Israel. But anything else anybody tells me, I'll say no. That's another God. The Bible talks about other gods. That's another God. But the God we are talking about is the God, the Father of Jesus Christ, the God of Israel. Any other God in any other location, that one you say with your heart, 
No. I don't want that other God. An extra God, my God is sufficient. So we want to harm on this because it's a major problem. Why? Because of our en environmental interference and influence. The environment. Issues of worship, idolatry, it, it's mainly the environment. The people around you, the people you, we, we work with, what they are saying, their beliefs, the, our regions, our areas, the God we promote, which God is promoted more than which. But we who are Christians, we know the God we are talking about. Make a personal decision. You will not be carried by other people to, to worship their God, because that is their God, irrespective of what relationships you, you have with the people. In, in First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 9, I'm sorry, First Chronicles 9, verse 1, so all Israel was, was recorded by a genealogist, and indeed they were inscribed in the book of the kings of Israel. But Judah was carried away captive to Babylon because of their unfaithfulness. So if you look at the trend, whenever there is uh, unfaithfulness, especially persistent unfaithfulness, there is a major separation. As we say this, think of marriage again. Extremely important. When there is persistent unfaithfulness, divorce separation is inevitable. Whether you are talking about idolatry, in which case we are unfaithful to the God of Israel, to the Father of Jesus Christ, even that causes separation. If it's unfaithfulness in marriage and is uh, persistent unfaithfulness, what unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness does is to damage inside. Even God's heart changes because of unfaithfulness. And the change is not positive. If it is a marriage and there is unfaithfulness, the people in the marriage change and the inside become, becomes polluted, defiled. Therefore, the gum for joining together the marriage to make them one, the gum fades. And uh, if that be the case, then even if you are living together, even like in the case of the children of Israel, they may be living in their own land, but there is unfaithfulness. God has seen it. The heart issue, you can tell there is no co connection. There is a disconnect inside. So it may not matter that you are living together with someone, but you are unfaithful, and that information is clear, it, is, it exists. The inside, there is divorce. The inside, there is a change that is not helping the unity and the peace and the joy of this marriage. So there's nothing you can do about that. But God is helping us to see it, that unfaithfulness to God, and primar uh, pr primarily we are talking about the major one, which is idolatry. So that steals the heart of the people. And once the heart is stolen, we become very stubborn. It becomes hard for us to come back to God. Very, very, very hard. I give a testimony of somebody where in a family, uh, the wife was not faithful, and they were Christians, and they went to the pastor, and the man said, Pastor, I want you to know that even in this, because she conceived, she, she was carrying a baby. 
in, in their unfaithfulness. But the man still decided that I'm not the one to break the marriage. I have the grace to wrestle with this. Um, I don't want to break the marriage. So he was explaining himself when they were seeking help. He said that uh, before we discuss anything, I want you to know, Pastor, that uh, this baby that is being carried in this unfaithful marriage by my wife will be my son or my daughter. I will support the child the whole length, provide in every aspect, just as my child, as my, 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 my baby. But, and I, I will maintain my wife, nevertheless. And if she must go, I have another house. Let her take that house. And let her know one thing. I'm not going to remarry. I'll wait for her to come back. And I'll provide even when she's there. Because of the unfaithfulness that had gone, in the, gone on in the family, the heart of the woman was not capable of uh, handling the situation. The guilt, the disconnect on the inside, and the demons, let's say they are demons also, all those forces did not allow her to accept anything that the husband said. She's the one who was unfaithful. So you too, when you become unfaithful, your heart is taken so far that even when God is offering you, turn back to me, I will do everything for you. Before he does anything negative. Because you go and read the book of Jeremiah, look at God, read again and read again. You will see that God will say many things in frustration, disappointment. These people have continued having, uh, playing halotary with the stones, with the trees. But at the end of the day, he will say, turn to back to me. After saying all that, he has not sent them to captivity. He is still saying, turn back to me. But what do people do? They continue doing the same things over and over again because their hearts are already stolen. It really doesn't matter whether it is the one who is innocent that is really using muscles to disconnect or it is the guilty one. The guilty one, the heart is stolen and it remains on the other side. Even when any promise is made, the heart will not hear the promises. So, unfaithfulness is extremely destructive. It damages, it corrupts, it causes havoc in any form of marriage. And we, we are saying we have a relationship with our God, we have a marriage relationship with our God, so it's a marriage. So unfaithfulness to God is a major threat in our work, in our marriage with God, and so on and so on. <clears throat> and so it is. Even in the, in the normal marriage, our own marriages and faithfulness, if it, it creeps in, then that marriage may not survive. It may not be able to withstand all the dynamics that may now start manifesting. So unfaithfulness is so powerful in terms of destroying a relationship, a marriage, and so on and so on. So trust God that as we talk about unfaithfulness, maybe you are married, you have a wife, you have a husband, remain faithful. It's the same thing. Whether it's your own marriage or it's a marriage between Christ and, and us, it's still the same thing. It has the same aspects. And concerning our marriage with Christ, you make a decision as an individual that I don't want to be unfaithful to my God. But we can go slightly outside the idolatry because unfaithfulness, whereas that is major, and unfaithfulness can be in many areas. That we are in this marriage, but we are not behaving like we are married. It's like we can entertain. It's like uh, this is not, it's not, a, it's not a deal. Ah, this is not a major thing. Even that, that is the beginning of many other things to come in that, into that marriage. 
So let's avoid anything that uh, when the Lord sees that, he sees like you are not faithful. Even giving, tithing, do not be unfaithful. Even in ministry, we are in ministry, and, uh, and uh, you have to respect certain aspects. Uh, you respect time, respect God in what he has called you, you respect your ministry that God has given you, but you don't look very faithful to that ministry, to what God has said. There are many, there are many aspects of faithfulness, but idolatry is the worst. But this others is like uh, you are being enticed when the, the unfaithful, you are unfaithful in a small thing, finances, you are not faithful. You are unfaithful on matters of finances. God's finances. So you are not faithful to God concerning finances. Something else will creep in. You are not faithful in what God has called you to do. He has, God, he has called you to take care of the sheep. You are, you are slaughtering the sheep. Instead of taking care of the sheep, you, are, you slaughter them. He has, t he has called you to gather, you are scattering. All those issues uh, are within unfaithfulness because you are not faithful to your responsibility, to what God has told you to do, to, to your calling. All those things are issues. But it's like they entice you. The moment you continue with unfaithfulness in small areas, it will now come to bigger areas. And even uh, in marriage, you start small. You start small, small, little by little, little by little. Uh, you are, there, are, there, are, there is unfaithfulness here, and something else here, something else here. By the time you know where you are, because all those things damage a relationship. Here you are not really talking about idolatry as such. You are talking about unfaithfulness. You're, it's only that idolatry is the climax. That one is climax. But all these other things in ministry and in your walk with God and faith there, even time. The time you have agreed to meet with, your, with the Holy Spirit, you don't honor that. You are not faithful in appointments. You tell the Lord, we are meeting at a given time, whatever it is, and you are coming three hours late. You are not faithful. What do you think he will be doing there waiting for you? Who do you think you are in a relationship with, uh, with relationship, uh, in relation to him? Is he the one to wait for you, or are you the one to wait for him? So, so all those <coughs> little things, uh, you must be careful. We must be careful because, again, I said in other programs, it is the small foxes that de destroy the vine. The small foxes, they are very de uh, destructive. And I did say that I've dealt with the trees and all that, and I know termites. Termites, when you see termites, they can bring down a very huge tree. And they are so small and believably so, re relative to the tree. And termites can also bring a house down. They eat day and night. They eat the timber work. When you see the thing now opening up, because of termites, if you knock it, you discover that inside is hollow. It's totally eaten up. So when you see the signals, you should respond immediately. If you see a measure of unfaithfulness in your life, in whichever area, you should address it immediately. If you do that, you start recovering ground. First Chronicles chapter 10, we are closing this, this program. First, First Chronicles chapter 10, uh, verse 13. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. So God killed him. He was not faithful to God on what God told him to do. He was not faithful to seek counsel from God concerning whatever he was going through. He went to a medium to consult the dead Samuel, to consult the dead. I don't think you do that. I don't think you're in that. You don't go, you don't go, go consulting the dead and having communion with the dead. I don't think so. God killed his king Saul because of the same thing. So we cannot be so unfaithful. Instead of consulting God, we are consulting the dead. 
mediums are the ones that are used as medium to reach out to the dead. They have that uh, spiritual power from demons to do that. And they do it for who? For the people who are not demons themselves. So they need demons to get the dead to respond. That is not godly. It is not godly. So trust God that you, you, you will not be like that. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 13. Son of man, when a land sins against me, by persistent and faithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off the supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. Persistent and faithfulness. I said God can tolerate, can, can, uh, has grace to, to, to wait, and he's hoping he'll get uh, an area that he can apply mercy, but the sin is persistent, persistent, persistent. When the nation go, uh, continually sins by being persistent, then he'll cut off the supply of bread and send farming and cut off man and beast from meat. That's what the word is saying. Ezekiel 15, verse 8, Thus I will make the land desolate because they have persisted in unfaithfulness, says the Lord. Persisting. Persisting in unfaithfulness. People who are and faithful, they don't do it only once. They persist. And that is the, 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 the main problem. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. This was not the best, it's not the sweetest message, but we need to, give, to get warnings. Help us in our unfaithfulness, Lord, where we are not faithful in finances, we are not faithful in your word, in, in your command, we are not obedient where we are not faithful because we are having other gods, we are clinging to other gods, losing the grace that could be ours. Lord, we pray that you help us and deliver us and heal us. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.